Good afternoon, Christians. So today, um, I would like to share his word. And also, I have a friend here uh, who is visiting me. And, and God is speaking to my heart to share his word. Because actually, we, we need his word for us to go on with our lives. So I couldn't show my PowerPoint. Uh, here on the TV because until now I couldn't uh, troubleshoot the problem here and I really need uh, my husband for that so my topic is about trusting the Lord so trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding in all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths this is really a very good uh, Bible verse a very good Bible verse that we could apply and so good to apply in especially in making decisions especially when we are um, uh, suffering or when we are in our uh, challenges or a lot of challenges that is um, that's uh, uh, challenges that or a lot of struggles that these are happening in our lives due to so many decision making that we had had or due to some problems existing because of the enemies throwing that to our lives but in any way in everything that uh, this um, unfavor that is happening to our lives we always have to trust in the Lord like like we have God we have big God but usually from our Christian lives we know this we know we know this we read this and we heard this for so many times but the question is that are we really applying this into our lives so here so let me read this trust in the Lord the first one is trust in the Lord so let's just have a personal evaluation can we trust God with all of our lives or why do we need to trust God so here Again, try how to trust in the Lord with all your heart. From Matthew 6.21, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. So that's why sometimes it's so hard to apply this verse. And we are not trusting the Lord because what we are trusting is about our money, our job, everything that we have. We put our trust there. And when things go wrong, then we are going to turn to God. But have we asked the Lord beforehand how to use this treasure that He has given to us? Second one is from Jeremiah 17, 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately sick. Who can understand it? That is why in our decision making, we have to be logical. We need to use that logical re reasoning, logical thinking. We have to create we have to think critically and before that we have to consult God pray ask the Holy Spirit before finalizing the decision because if we're going again to trust our heart troubles will just come along the third one is about Psalm 37 4 delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart so God is giving the desires of our heart. So we have to delight first. Delight ourselves to God and He will give the desires of our heart. That's a very promising, right? So why are we going to, to, be so, to become so stubborn towards God? What could we get for being a stubborn child? Nothing. It's only troubles. So we have to delight. And God will give everything which is beneficial to His kingdom, to His glory. And when things are beneficial to His, to His glory, we are benefiting that. We are the ones receiving and experiencing the blessings from the Lord because He owns everything. Second one is do not lean on your own understanding. So how to trust the Lord? Do not depend on ourselves. Like from Romans 11, 33. Oh, oh the depth of the riches, riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable his, are His judgments and how inscrutable His ways. Do not trust your mind. From Proverbs 28, 26. Whoever trusts 
in his own mind is a fool but he walks in wisdom will be delivered that is why we always have to ask wisdom from the Lord because we're like foolish we think we thought that we are smarter that we are the most intelligent the reason why we have this uh, riches why we have career why, why do we have a position in our job why do we have everything and then it's because of ourselves it happens because of our abilities who gave that abilities on the first hand who gave that skills on the first hand it's coming from the Lord that we have to use for his glory number three is that replace negative thoughts with positive ones from Ephesians 5 15 16 look carefully then how you walk not as unwise but as wise making the best use of the time because the days are evil so again do not lean on do not lean on your own understanding so number one is do not depend on ourselves number two is do not trust your mind number three is replace negative thoughts with positive ones there's so many negativities around us. There's so many bullying happening around us. If we thought that the bullying is happening for, uh, happening only with the kids, happening to, to uh, younger ones, to school, no. Because bullying is happening at all ages. When you go at work, even though we are professional, it's happening. But we cannot control our surroundings. We cannot control them. But what we can control is ourselves. How do we manage it? How do we turn to God? Because God can do everything. God is sovereign. Everything is under His control. If we know how to pray with a good heart, with a good motive of our hearts, He will work on it. He will work on it. We have to rebuke and bind the spirit of bullying around us. It will happen and you will see that God is alive and God is working in our lives. All we have to do is to trust Him. And how could we replace the negative thoughts with His word? Pray and always welcome the Holy Spirit, the Holy Presence because the Holy Spirit will help us all throughout our problems. The third one is, in all your ways, acknowledge Him. So I have trust in the Lord. And the second one is, do not lean on your own understanding. The third one is, in all your ways, acknowledge Him. Do we do this? Or we always praise ourselves? How great we are. Or we always praise ourselves because we look good because we have everything we can buy a lot of things but mind you Christians these things these are only earthly uh, glory this can pass away so what are we going to do what should what shall we do in all our ways acknowledge him because he is the one giving everything he owns everything so how to trust the lord do not depend on your ways from proverbs 16 2 all the ways of a man are pure in his own eyes but the lord weighs the spirit from proverbs 14 12 there is a way that seems right to a man but its end is the way to death this is so sad because so many people, so many Christians now are blind to see what is right and what is wrong, what is evil and what is good. As Christians, we should be innocent to evil, but so many people today, they are enjoying doing such things because of what? self glory again if you have lots of friends if you have lots of money if you can do everything 
you want? If everything happens the way you want, you get the glory. You didn't acknowledge God. And so, what is happening in the end? You'll go home alone. And you will feel that loneliness, that sadness. Because this happiness that you could get from the world, that is temporary. My Christians, people, these are all temporary. But if we have God's joy coming from the Lord, even you are alone, you are happy and you have peace of mind and you have that clear, clear mind that you could set goals by the grace of God. Because God has given us a lot of promises, a lot of promises. And whenever we are suffering, we are struggling, He is there to help us. God is with us all the time. What we have to do is to acknowledge Him as His help. He is only waiting for us. So do not, tr do not trust on the things we see from Proverbs 3 to 7. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. Turn away. Do not join the world. If you join the world, yes. You could gain status, like you could say that you are having lots of friends, your uh, people like you, but how sure are you that people like you, even behind you? So that's why in everything we do, and when we receive the blessings, when God answered our prayers, we have to acknowledge Him, acknowledge Him. We have to please our Lord. And God, when God is pleased, we get the favor that you could never imagine. So, in, your, in all your ways, acknowledge Him. So, number, the, the, the next one would be like, hear God and obey. Are we still hearing the voice of the Lord? Or not? Because we are full of ourselves. So from Luke 11, 28, but he said, Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and keep it. So many Christians today, so many people today, they hear the word of God, but they don't keep it. Because by nature, we are weak. We are weak. That's why the more we need God. Because in Him, He can make us stronger. From John 8, 47, Whoever is of God hears the words of God. The reason why you do not hear them is that you are not of God. So, I did not say this. It's coming from the Word. John 8, 47. The reason why you do not hear them is that you are not of God. That's why you couldn't hear anything from them. You go on to your will. From John 10, 4 to 5, When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him. But they know his voice. A stranger, a stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. But we God, as Christian, as children of God, we know his voice and we hear his voice so why do we need to trust God because he will make straight your paths from Psalm 9 10 and those who know your name put their trust in you for you O Lord have not forsaken those who seek you Psalm 118 6 the Lord is on my side I will not fear what can man do to me right if so many people are bullying around you, what they can do to you? Nothing. Because the Lord is on our side. But what is happening? Why we keep on suffering from this situation? 
Because maybe we just say that the Lord is on our side, but we are not applying that to our lives. That we are not digesting that promise into our hearts. And that's the reason why we keep falling. It's because how God can defend us if we keep sinning. God is always looking into our hearts, not into our achievements, not into our looks, not into the money that we have, but God is looking into our hearts. So how is our hearts? Is it pleasing to the eyes of the Lord? Or it is full of pride? Full of pride. That's why when we suffer, we turn to God and blame Him? Who are we to blame God? Well, in the first place that we are the ones causing the effect, the consequences. So trust in the Lord. Trust, trusting God doesn't mean your life will become easier. It's a way for us to make our lives better and make our way straight. So again, so this is my last word, my last verse. Trust in the Lord, Proverbs 3, 5 to 12. Trust God from the bottom of your heart. Don't try to figure out everything on your own. Listen for God's voice in everything you do. Everywhere you go, He's the one who will keep you on track. Don't assume that you know it all. Run to God. Your body will glow with health. Your very bones will vibrate with life. Honor God with everything you own. Give Him the first and the best your burns will burst. Your wine vats remove. But don't, dear friend, resent God's discipline. Don't sulk under His loving correction. It's the child He loves that God corrects. A father's delight is behind all this. That's how the Father loves us. And everything is ready for us. Let's just walk straight to his will god the father loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son and jesus christ suffered on the cross so when we suffer we ask god lord i did not deserve this can you can you ask that question to jesus christ do you think jesus christ deserved to be on the cross for how many hours he suffered? Could you imagine how he suffered? For you and for me? And so you're giving up? And you blame the Lord from what you are suffering today? No Christians, wake up. This year, 2022, we have to start doing the right thing. We have to turn to God because everything is there. My fellow believers, why we couldn't get it? Because we keep on going sideways. This time, from this year, it's time to turn to God and trust in Him. Have faith. To Jesus Christ. Amen.